Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hobby Lodge and in this video I'm going to talk to you about our day out at Salute 2024 which we've just gotten back from and I'm feeling extremely tired. Right, so the event, um, been looking forward to this for some time, so I'm really glad it's happened, and now obviously a little bit sad that it's over, uh, because I actually missed last year's event. Uh, Salute 50, this was Salute 51 this year, but the big one was Salute 50 last year, and unfortunately, um, through no fault of my own, I ended up in hospital and having an operation um, on the weekend of Salute 50. So I was a bit gutted that I missed it, um, but of course the operation was needed and had to be done, and, and you know, all worked out great um was a bit of an emergency thing so uh yeah but uh really gutted that i missed last year so um i've been going to salute since i think 2015 uh, 2016 maybe uh, and just enjoyed every single year that we've been just absolutely absolutely loved it so uh yeah to, to miss it but really glad to get back to it this year and that's what we're here to talk about because it was a fantastic day out if you don't know, um, Salute is a, an event that happens every single year at the London Excel um, around about this time of year. And it is an event for all things tabletop and wargaming, you know, miniature wargaming, miniature painting. Uh, there's, of course, some role playing in there as well, but very much focuses on tabletop war game with miniatures and miniature painting so uh yeah we were there uh we got there about sort of half past nine it's at the excel so really easy to get to whether you're coming in by train um car uh even even flying if you if you want to um you can come into london city and you're a couple of stops away so uh yeah pretty much however you want to get there you can get there uh parking is a little bit expensive it's 25 pound but for me personally, I live about 25 minutes away by car, um, so it's a really easy drive just through London to, to get there uh, and, and park up. And it just means at the end of the day, selfishly, at the end of the day when I've got tired feet and I don't want to stand and wait for a train or anything else, I can hop in the car, the boys can jump in, we can put stuff in the boot, and we can take a nice easy drive home. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's what we did. So yeah, we got there about half past nine. Um, big long queue to get in, it opens at 10 o'clock in the morning. And I'll talk about whether you need to go super early or not in, in a moment but uh, yeah we were there uh, ready for the doors to open big long queue and one of the nicest things happened um we were standing in the queue and the person in front of us turned around and said oh by the way i really love your channel and, and everything you do on there so that was super nice um you know you don't do this and i'm certainly not a big youtuber or famous or anything like that sort of nonsense but isn't it nice that if you do do something uh, that someone says hey you know i like what you do so that was a really nice thing to happen and the boys really liked it as well that someone saw the channel and saw what we do and, and liked it so uh, yeah thank you for that you know who you are if you do watch this it was a lovely thing to say so um it's not always easy to approach strangers i'm terrible at it i very rarely i saw loads of big youtubers um like proper big youtubers like midwinter minis and, and others there uh, uh, and i don't ever say hello because i always think why would they want to talk to me so uh um yeah that's that's where we're at with that um but it was nice uh yeah so we queued up uh once the doors opened at 10 o'clock the queue goes very quick they're very slick at this uh, and you can get through the doors and you're into the the big hall itself it's all run by one gaming club called south london warlords uh, and then a whole bunch of um volunteers and you know vendors and gaming clubs that get involved but these guys are behind it all um the coverage is all done by the team over on tabletop.com previously known as beasts of war uh, and they're a really nice set of guys that i've known for a number of years now actually um when i think about um, how much how long i've known those guys that's coming on for nearly almost 10 years uh, so it was really great to see them i probably only get to see them once a year and sometimes you're just a, it's a brief hello um but uh it's nice to just both of them say hello see what they're up to talk about the event for for moments minutes uh and then move on and, and and do it but that's kind of enough sometimes that's enough to just touch in with people that you might only talk to online <clears throat> or other or other methods um but to see them in person shake hands say hello is it was a really nice moment to share with a bunch of people actually so that was really cool something else i wanted to talk about was meeting someone new for the first time 
like I've said before, I always struggle at these events to go up to people and say hello, and I always think, why are they going to want to talk to me? Or you know, it's just it's just a hang up I have of myself. So uh, it's just a real struggle. But um, yeah, I was really glad to get to meet uh, Theo from Slimehouse TV. It's a new channel that I've been watching for probably. Oh, like maybe the last six months or so um I'll, I'll stick a link to his channel below and he's really into all of the sort of retro toys um but also wargaming as well like warhammer especially old warhammer toys or sorry miniatures they all called warhammer uh, toys but uh, the older sort of lead miniatures and the old styles of miniatures from the old world not the not the new old world but the old old world um and things like that and, and the reason why i really wanted to meet him is because he's also been doing an awful lot of his own sculpting like actually making his own toys um and also miniature versions of those toys uh, and he's done something recently called the, T the Turgor, uh, which is just a really cool thing. Uh, and I got to have a photo with it <laughs> and, and meet him. Um, and it was just really nice. So really nice fella. We only spoke for a couple of minutes. And again, I always feel super embarrassed at these things, even asking for a bit of a selfie or a photo with somebody. Um, but I, I was really great to get my hands on this um, Sophobi. Uh, I think that's called the name for it. Uh, I'm probably got that name wrong. Um, but the, that's the style that it's made, this Japanese style of making toys. Uh, and it's been done in large and also a small version of it as well, I think, which was in resin. Um, but really, really cool to meet him and just got a chance to meet with Turgor and get my hands on it. So, uh, yeah, like I say, these events are always great if you can pluck up the courage. I don't know what it is to go and say hello to people. There was all sorts of YouTubers there. Um, you know, I saw Midwinter Minis was there. Duncan Rhodes was there and a few others. That, um, yeah, just 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 loads way 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 bigger than than this channel um but uh it's i always struggle to say hello but um it was nice to see um me and the boys we walked around there's aisles and aisles and i'm hopefully putting some footage over this or i'll pop footage in whatever way works best normally i just play stuff over the top um of going up and down aisles and seeing all the gaming tables that are set out and most of these gaming tables are done exquisitely well like you just just great terrain great paint jobs very sort of out of the box not someone just chucking down a play mat and a bunch of terrain on it um they're often got you know verticality involved they've got features involved on the table there's lighting involved they really go to town on some of these tables and they look fantastic and they're all there to be played with so they are demo games going on you can sit down with the family and you can play a game or at least a couple of turns of a game to then see whether that's a game you want to play if you in the future because right? some games can take several hours to play and you've probably not got that time you probably we don't want to spend that time and they would only get to show a couple of people the game so playing a turn playing two turns get a feel for the game is it something you'd want to investigate further and then maybe going off and picking up the rule set or the miniatures or uh, you know whatever it might be to sort of get you the next steps into that into that game so that's really not and there was i mean there's everything from historical war gaming to modern day to post-apocalyptic to fantasy to sci-fi um anything you want to get your hands on have a go at a different type of game. sports games uh, we saw a futuristic rugby game that looks really cool uh, it's not very often you see um, board games or miniature war gaming based on rugby so that was quite nice uh, for something different um, but that you know everything you can think of um the theme of salute 51 was pirates uh, so of course there was lots of pirate based games and even i picked up some piratey based stuff uh, you've got to you know it's nice to do the theme um but yeah just a great day and like and just vendors and vendors and vendors so yes you can buy an awful lot and a lot of it is buying um but you're also demoing games meeting people seeing tutorials on on painting you know there's um the uh I've saw, uh, there was speed painting there there was techniques on on dry brushing there was techniques on um using airbrush paints and, and lots of other stuff going on there was just um a just a myriad of different things uh my boys enjoyed the speed painting competition they did um but all the different paint companies are there showing off why their paint brand is better than others um duncan Rhodes x games workshop was there with his two thin coats set up um so you can go and see those paints in place i know the um, fanatic paint range was there as well uh, of course the speed paints from army painter um not such a huge presence actually i don't think there was any stall dedicated to games workshop games workshop were sort of 
across the board because a lot of the vendors of course sell games workshop but there was no games workshop presence i don't believe unless i missed it at, at salute this year sometimes there is um because they might have forge world there for instance um but i don't believe this year there was hey not that that's a bad thing because we all know about games workshop there's a million places you can go and find out about those guys so let's spot a, a spotlight on those small indie companies or smaller companies that are, are trying to break through and get their thing out there to be seen so uh yeah there's no no shakes there at all so um yeah really good um I'm trying to think what else we did when we was there um there were talks going on as well we didn't do any of the talks uh that's probably because i've got three young boys with me uh and they're probably not going to find them as interesting as i might do um so maybe that's something i could like you know if i could get them settled in the game or you know um i could go and see some of the talks that happened because there was a whole bunch of uh, talks going on uh, lots of tubers um that are in sort of the miniature war gaming they were doing i think they were called hobby heroes chats uh there was one about sculpting there was one about um you know uh, with just all sorts of hobby stuff in general um and then there was the huge painting competition which is something that i really like looking into and it sparked an idea that i've never done and i don't know if you're this far into the video give me a comment down below maybe um should i enter a painting competition i've never gone that deep into painting i paint to a tabletop standard to a playing standard uh, and i'm really happy with the level of painting i'm at like i think i can get a miniature out in two hours that looks great on the tabletop you know i've, I've painted many many you know I'm, I'm no expert you know i'm a contrast painter i'm a you know i i've i've, I've done some nice stuff in the past um, but i've never painted to a competition level like something that's maybe 10 20 40 80 hours of effort into a single miniature to make it look fantastic and and i feel like that's something i should do like i feel like that's a milestone i should at least have entered a competition once uh, and it would really push me to try and paint excellently like just paint very very well um and what happens when you try and put in 50 60 70 hours into a miniature you know what's the process you go through what's the thinking you go into um and and can it can can anyone do it essentially you know if once you've got the basics of painting can anyone have a go at painting a a, a really good miniature that's competition worthy i'm not saying win i'm saying have someone go oh yeah that's a, a competition level standard that would be quite that'd be an accolade in itself so yeah you know is that something you guys would be interested in seeing me do you know i do painting live streams um would there be video content and that would be interested in of me doing it and if not i'd probably do it for my own like my own purpose anyway um but uh yeah it's whether you guys might be interested in, in seeing something like that but yeah i that's um when i saw all of the entries going in um and there's stuff from a single miniature there's massive dioramas there's all sorts there's, there's bus um i just thought you know what that feels like something maybe i should have a crack at otherwise you know lots of walking around lots of as i said talking to people that you can um seeing the stuff on offer seeing the new things um it was amazing to see some of the advancements in 3d printing um hopefully at some point i'm showing a picture of a face that had been 3d printed and painted that looked like real like it was unbelievable how well this stuff was done uh, they had some resin on display that was flexible like normally if you 3d print a resin model and you dropped it on the floor it'd probably shatter or at least break into a number of pieces um there's flexible resins now that you can make a bouncy ball out of and throw it around and it won't break um you know m m models that have got you know flag poles or spears that you can properly bend almost you know to 90 degrees and they just don't break you know so it's meaning that you can print stuff now that's just not that you know, it's not super fragile um you know would i use it i kind of weigh up the cost of that resin because it's not cheap resin versus if i break a model i can always reprint it um yes i've got to paint it but you know how often do you break models i have broken some before so it definitely made me think uh, i printed off a very nice uh elf on a griffin once and uh it was up on top of the glass cabinet there now when i moved the glass cabinet i stupidly didn't take the model down thinking it would just move fine the, the cabinet caught a little lip in the floor and uh it tipped and that model fell and 
yeah, it broke into a number of pieces. So uh, I've seen uh, I've seen what can happen when you don't use uh, like a, a resin with some flexibility in it. So that was interesting. Um, you know, my printers are getting quite old now. You know, seeing what detail levels these 8K, 12K printers can get to is is amazing. Maybe it's time to upgrade my Elegoo Mars Pro. Um, uh, who knows? But um, yeah, that was really, really good. Uh, and of course, let's jump into some swag. You've heard me rattle on. Ultimately, if you're into anything in this hobby and you haven't been to Salute, I can just highly recommend you go. So get yourself down to the London Excel next year and uh, and go and uh if you see me around say hello and I'll, I'll definitely have a chat with you and see what you're up to in in the hobby but let's jump into some of the swag because sometimes that's what we come for right that's what we go for we go for what we're going to bring home to our little hobby dens uh, and keep us occupied for the next few weeks and months hopefully and not just go into our pile of shame which definitely some of it will do um so yeah when you first go in you get a little bag um i haven't got the bag to hand have i uh, no, I haven't got the plastic bag to hand, but you get a plastic bag when you go in the door. It's got your um, your program in there, so you can see it in a, like a, an event map. And then, of course, all your advertising for the various people that are there. Sometimes there's coupon codes in there and all sorts of stuff, voucher codes, whatever you want to call it, um, money off codes. Um, so it's always worth flicking through there because sometimes you might be going to, say, buy a gaming mat. Or there might be a chance that there's a 10% off in the book. So definitely have a look through that if you've got places in mind you're going to to see. Because, hey, just by looking in the book, you might save yourself 10%. So it's worth flicking through it. Uh, and then obviously the map is useful because, again, if you want to go and... There's always a company that I can't remember the name of it. They're always in the back corner and they sell um, trees and terrain. Like they look really, really nice. Every year, that place sells out within the first hour or so like every year whenever i see it it's always empty because everyone's already like been there and and hammered it um and i think that's because it's terrain that's really useful in not just tabletop war gaming but also if you're a, uh you know a train hobbyist or any other type of miniature hobbyist um uh, they they're really suitable for, for that sort of thing so um yeah uh, so in the bag um we've got some dice you know some salute dice i'll show you a little as i say it's piratey so there's the uh, salute 51 on there with some little crossed cutlasses now the nice thing is because me and three boys go we get th four goodie bags um my son's got one in his room so we got i got three of the three of the dice um you get a miniature every year uh, so this year it is from bad squiddo games a fantastic little shop that does um um she used to do all sort of female miniatures. I think she does all sorts now, and the team with her. Um, but uh, the company, a bad squiddo game. I don't know if you'll see the logo. They, for those of you in the hobby, you'll definitely recognise the logo, even if it's no focus. Um, uh, actually, I bought some stuff from there as well. Um, but yeah, they, this year it's a lady pirate. Um, as you can see, there's the there's the lady pirate again. It's probably not going to get into focus because it's inside a plastic bag. There we go. There we go. That normally has the salute logo down the bottom salute 51 and uh, she's flying to the jolly roger um and now i'm gutted and i don't know if anyone's watching this and you happen to have gone to salute last year and you and you maybe you maybe had multiple goodie bags um because you took family with you or something i'm i really would like to get because i missed it again because i was in hospital i'd love to get the salute 50 miniature um i did go and ask if they had any um because sometimes you can buy previous year's miniatures but they said they didn't have any um so uh I'm, i will be looking probably on ebay because i've got them every year and i paint them up every year um from the event and i'm obviously missing um salute 50 um and i'd love to get hold of it so look if you've got one maybe drop me a message or something or leave a comment below and we can work out a trade or something you know for it or, or whatever um so yeah that was the the miniature uh this was really cool um and the swag bag this year i must admit was was pretty darn good um bearing in mind they give everyone that comes to the event like you don't pay extra for it it's part of your ticket price which isn't very much it's like 10 pounds or something it's not a, it's not an expensive ticket to go uh, we got these which is um these little um hobby um containers now the nice thing about these hobby containers i'll show you this one here because this is my son's painting from uh, uh the speed the speed painting is that they're magnetic so those two miniatures that are in there They've got little magnetic bases and they stick to the inside of the case so you know you can move them around and your miniatures aren't going to fall out and break 
um but i find of course we got three of these um so these are really nice you just put a miniature project in like maybe you've got a little war band or something um you can put them in these little boxes store them in your drawers or whatever it is and then when you want to paint up that war band you can just go and get that box so i find this a nice way to store projects um i have a load of them um not like this small probably the size up from this this is probably only going to fit like um you know two or three miniatures in it and not very tall ones these are probably the smallest ones they do but even then or you could use it to keep uh, maybe a terrain mixture in there maybe you've got some sand and some stones and some other bits and pieces you've made a little mixture up and you now you don't want to store it in the original pots because those you don't contaminate those so you can store it in things like these so these are really useful i guess that's what they're called right really useful boxes um are really useful and you should uh yeah you, you get you got one of them each of your bag so we've got three of those and this is where everyone's bag might have been slightly different because in our fourth bag the bag that i had i didn't get a really useful box i got a neoprene folding dice tray so i got this noble dragon um dice tray from a company called all rolled up we have plenty of their products um they're really good at dice trays token trays dice tokens all of that sort of you know the the odds and sods you need for war gaming so i'm gonna open this up now and take a look at it so uh yeah this was this was what was in my bag um so really chuffed with that because whilst it's nice to get another really useful box it's also nice to get something not that so uh yeah this is a this is a dice tray that we've got and it's a pretty cool looking so there we go so it's just neoprene just uh like you get like a mouse mat uh, and then it's got um, these poppers in the corner. You pop the poppers together uh, like this. Okay, once you've popped, so you popped all your corners, you then got uh, a little dice tray. So you can throw your dice in there, roll away, and, uh, and away you go. And it's got quite a nice uh, dragon um, graphic on it. So I thought that was pretty cool. Can't grumble for free. So um, yeah, really happy with that. Uh, and I will that will 100% get used. No, no two ways about it. Right, other bits and pieces. Oh, um, I haven't got it to show, um, but my son uh, was really loving uh, the look of the Eldari for the Warhammer um, game, and um, he fancied picking up a box. So um, maybe here somewhere, I'll show you what he picked up um, for the Eldar. Um, he just wants to yeah he's he's already opening that literally the moment he got home he's like dad i'm gonna go and build and paint i'm like great off you go so that's my oldest son um building and painting that box so uh yeah uh other stuff we got there was a, a guy giving away sprues now this looks like warlord games to me and i think it is warlord games uh yes you got uh british uh expedition force Oh, uh, uh, War Games Atlantic. Sorry, War Games Atlantic. Uh, they were just giving away sprues. So, of course, we got a sprue each. So I have four sprues of um, British Expendary Force. I don't know if I'll ever use these, but if anyone's building this force, let me know, because I've got four sprues of it uh, that I'll probably never use, and maybe someone else will want them. Um, but, yeah, that was nice. Uh, and then to actual stuff that I purchased. Now, I didn't go crazy, because, to be frank... I have so many war games in here and thousands of miniatures that I don't need more. Like I don't actually need new games. In fact, a lot of the games when we were walking around, we saw the games and we're like, oh yeah, we've got that. You know, we really like the look of Gaslands. I've got Gaslands. We like to look at Kings of War. We've got Kings of War. Uh, Dracula's America. Um, uh, the one that I don't think I did have, which I am going to pick up, it was Dead Man's Hand because it's another western game a bit like dracula's america um so that one looks really quite cool but there were so many games as we're walking around um that i either own older copies of like maybe there's a new rule set like bushido for instance i own the old edition of bushido and I, we kind of said to ourselves well look let's get it on the table let's play that version and if we like it we can go upgrade to the to the newer one um rather than going in and getting stuff and then not wanting it uh, i did pick up the he-man box but I put it down again because it's another game where we've got games. But yeah, Marvel Pro, Marvel um, Crisis Protocol, and He Man, those were very very tempting as tabletop war games. Um, but again, 
I think the, maybe the thing that stops me a little bit is if you're painting He-Man or you're painting Marvel, they have to look like what they represent. He-Man's got to look like He-Man. Iron Man's got to look like Iron Man. The reason why I really enjoy painting fantasy um that's not tied to a, an ip or, or sci-fi is that you can do whatever you like like you know you can pretty much paint how you want so you don't have to paint following the box art and i feel like sometimes when you're playing an ip based game you've got to make it look like the ip so um that's probably one of the things that sort of holds me off a little bit anyway um, my youngest son he really wanted to get some mimics so uh, if you don't know a mimic is a chest that normally changes into something quite horrible when you approach it yeah lots of them feature in sort of role-playing games and like that so um we picked up from that bad squiddo games the people that did the uh miniature that you can collect is this little set of varying horrible little mimics as you can see there's the classic uh, treasure chest one but there's also a book a bag um a treasure pile that turns into a mimic uh it's a really cool little set uh, and I don't think it was more than ten pounds. I think it was ten quid for for that little collection of mimics there. Uh, so yeah, we had no issue in picking that up for him. Um, I'm going to prime them, and uh, he wants to have a go at painting them. So you can't really say no. Um, oh, this one's about to fall out of his box. That's not good. Uh, let me just close this blister pack up again. So this one here is I have been for some time uh, building and painting a Viking army um for a game called saga uh i probably probably will complete the army i'll probably never play a game of saga because i only know a couple of people and they live in northern ireland um to be able to play with so um uh, the chances of me playing saga anytime soon are probably low uh, but i really wanted to get a lagatha for um the game um now because in most sort of it doesn't always happen but with the miniatures i have been buying for saga um, you don't really get many ladies in in the game. That's one of the things that Bad Squiddo Games does is they bring a lot of female representation into war games. And a lot of time you buy miniatures, and they're always men, and that's that's fine. Um, but sometimes there's some really cool female characters you want to get. And you know, if you've watched the TV show Vikings at all, you'll know all from history. Like you know, Lagatha is a pretty awesome individual. So um, to see a Lagatha model, um, I thought that was really good, and I would pick that up. So you get to see you get her on both horse. Uh, and on foot the shield maiden there so she'll go really well with my viking miniatures uh and then i mean for anyone who knows me at this point um you know i probably wasn't what's the right word i probably was going to come back with some moonstone and of course i did so yes i was going to walk in with some moonstone and as soon as we walked in the hall um one of the first booths we came we turned right and straight away there was moonstone now i don't know if his plan is to always have a stall closest to the entrance rather than further back or further in um, and there's probably lots of reasons for where you have your stall but i always find this guy is very close to the entrance um sometimes tucked away but very close if you can hear my dog barking i'm sorry about that not much i can do um but um yes this is uh, a game that i'm a big fan of it's currently the game on the table behind me there's videos on the channel about the game it is a whimsical fantastical um little skirmish game uh, which to me screams jim henson labyrinth dark crystal um all of those types of um movies and and um you know just the vibe of those types of things uh with just characters that are fantastic and just really and the game is just fantastically fun it has a great bluff mechanic which you do with cards it has great sort of you know synergy between different characters you can pretty much bring and build and play whatever you like from the range to create your warband uh, it takes four turns to play so you, you can have a game fairly quickly but there's a deep level of understanding of the mechanics and things like that so you can play it very easily but you can also get to be you know a tournament level play with this game um, and the, 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 the stuff that the guy is doing and the, the team he now has i hope he has a team because he works bloody hard otherwise um is just fantastic there was a kickstarter for an entire new faction um which i completely forgot that i backed uh it hadn't come up until a, a friend of mine mentioned it and i was like oh yeah uh, i've forgotten about that i wonder if i 
and it turned out I did. Luckily, I backed it, and I will be getting the full new faction. Um, but given it was pirates, and I'm rabbited now, I should just show the stuff, Martin. Get on with it. Um, I picked up the uh, pirate set that they have um, for the... Um, yeah, I forget the... I always forget the names of the factions. Um, but anyway, it's the it's the sort of... I think it's the, the, the Dominion. The Dominion is... Um, like, I'm not gonna say they're the, they're the evil guys, but they, they you know, the moon is pretty bad. Uh, so this is, as you can see, a pirate uh, on a boat. Uh, I'll show you the back because the back actually shows the miniatures. So you've got um, Swiggity Swooty, El Capitano, and Krusty Baluba. So these are the three, and you'll see what I mean by just how. Um, let's get this to focus. Come on, come on! I need you right now. There we go. So that giant sort of lobster creature. The little goblin in his pirate boat and then the um squid guy with his chest very just fun little characters and that's not the only box so that i picked up that box which is called uh booty's bulge and then we've got uh, this one here which is black powder and this is some more humanoid type characters uh, still from the dominion uh, let me show you the front first so there's the front there you go. They're more classic, apart from the uh, the ape or the monkey in the background there. Uh, the other two, obviously, very humanoid um, with the late, with the swashbucklers uh, and stuff. And then on the back, so on, you've got here uh, Powder Monkey, Peggy, and Swash. There you go. There's the three miniatures you get in the box. Yeah. So there we go. So, uh, yeah, six new miniatures. I mean, I've got... You know, thankfully, most of my Moonstone is painted. I actually have three, no, four on the table next to me that um, I haven't been painted. But like I say, I can I, I tend to do these in about two hours each. Uh, so it's nice to have some always on the go, ready to go, because um, when that Kickstarter shows up, I'm probably going to have, like, a whole bunch that needs doing. Um, but, yeah, that's the, the Moonstone. Definitely check out Moonstone. Like, if it's an interest you might have in this hobby, Moonstone is a fantastic game um so yeah look hopefully you've seen some video footage if you if you haven't i'm going to chuck a load in now maybe or repeat some of it so you can look around again this video has already gone on for far too long uh, if you've stuck on this fast then great thank you um give us a like give us some comments if you're that salute today what did you like about it? what didn't you like about it um the only thing i would do differently and would be the gaming tables is to have some sort of booking system or something i wish they would do this because randomly walking up and hoping that you're going to get a demo game of a table is difficult it is very difficult there's likely to be people on there and you, it's luck of the draw whether you turn up and there's no someone sat at the seats um and nine times out of ten there are people sat at the seat but that would be fine if someone said hey i've got a demo game going now but i'll book you in if you come back in 15 minutes or hey you know i've not got a free slot till two o'clock if you can come back for two or take a ticket or whatever that would be a great way to do it because it just means that you would know you're going to get to try a game but there were games there today that we would love to have sat down and had a go at but we couldn't because randomness of just turning up and finding an empty spot um was never going to happen so there probably is reasons why it's not done like that um but selfishly i would love it to be done like that because at least i know we would be getting or wouldn't be getting a game based on whether there was availability at a time period that we could attend. So, um, yeah, otherwise, I cannot fault it. A great day out, great event. I highly recommend you go. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you on the next video. Um, hopefully, we're going to get some painting videos done, more retro stuff, all sorts. The Hobby Lodge is just a place where everything and anything in sort of nerd culture can happen. So I'm glad you're here with me on the journey, and I'll speak to you soon. All right? Ta-da. Bye-bye.